um, so I have a few poems. Most are kind of short. And I will start with one that I wrote this past year in the middle of the pandemic. It has a, an epigraph from NBC News. Social distancing during COVID means no hugs. Hugging the tree. It was neither part of a protest nor a statement to the world. I simply put my arm around a tall oak and stood and embraced our bodies juxtaposed. There was no swaying. Her trunk, solid and true, felt like an ancestor, a pillar thick with years. Her bark scratched my skin if I moved, so I stayed still. It was a time to be calm and reflect on our presence together, to look up to the sky and fathom the height of my partner, to inhale the earthy scent, to arc my grateful arms around the strong matriarch and whisper into the wood my wordless secret. I have not hugged anyone for months, my dear tree. In Alexandria, where I live, I'm really close to the Potomac River. It's just a block away from my home. So I walk there all the time. And I, you know, look at, I let my eyes roam. I look at the water and I think about um, the history of Alexandria, the history of the Potomac River. <coughs> and I, um, I wrote this poem called Potomac River. This one also has an epigraph and it comes from um, the William and Mary Quarterly. And this, is the, this is the quote. Historians seek to explain the growth of the area's slave population have paid little attention to the extent of African importations to the Potomac. Potomac River. I come to let my eyes wander over your waves Every sine and cosine cycle infinite, one following the next, an open-ended flowing. Each trough and crest holds its own tale of migration, a beginning without ending, forced from its original home. Beneath these bobbing, glassy undulations are untold histories looking for the sun, not just the fish, and algae and twigs, but also sunken secrets waiting for hundreds of years to emerge. With them are coiled the terror, with them are coiled the terror in slave ships, the grinding of shackles, <coughs> wails of children. All of this and today's repentance, people sieving stories from the current to tell and remember honor and rectify, knowing there's no way to make this river fully clear again. But maybe a lost justice at the bottom can be recovered. Pull it out, gather it in, unclench the fisted tails, and let the dark waves lap ashore. There are over 80 million refugees in the world at present. These are people who have left their homes, these are people who are internally displaced. And because my parents are Palestinian refugees, I have a special you know, connection with all refugees. Many of them navigate incredibly dangerous borders and border areas and bodies of water. So they flee their homes, as you know, for political reasons, for economic reasons, for natural disasters. <coughs> so this book, this poem is um, inspired by some of the tales I've read about. Another epigraph. You know when an emigrant needs something <coughs> to hold onto, a spider web looks like a wooden beam. That's by the author Rafiq Shami from his book, Damascus Nights. Um, 
and just, um, I have a few words in Arabic in this poem, but I think you'll understand what they are from the way I read it. A grammar for fleeing. Hudud, the word for border, looms in her mind's vocabulary like a passive voice, a noun for longing. Maybe the undulating line runs in water or in sand, splays on the imagined cover of a passport, map for a new home. She has vowed to cross it, water on her hip, two legs doggedly moving apace, two legs suspended there. She plans to le learn the other side like a foreign language. First the stones as single sentences, then the houses, I'm sorry, first the stones as single utterances, then the houses and hills, sentences. The scene will warm in the light of the sun. Now it's dark and the little girl is ensconced in her arms, eyes closed, but a lulling breeze could spell betrayal if they aren't careful. She reaches between her breasts for the pendant inscribed with aman, hope, rubs it like a magic lamp. The din of conversation starts to rise as light gathers at the horizon where the singular message of true East has grounded her since childhood. Lay low, look west, wait for the boat, she understands the grammar for fleeing, unspoken rules that decide how the journey will end, when words like har, war, and jour, hunger, might ebb and not flow. Her toddler wakes, asking for water, while the sea responds with crashing waves. <laughs> 